Hello, this is John Miller, the creator of The Rest of Everest. I think I can safely say that this show is, without a doubt, the most in-depth look into the entire experience of what it takes to climb Everest, as well as some other peaks throughout the Himalayas. But all of the events in the series are shown in chronological order. So if you're new to the show, please go all the way back to episode 000 and watch everything in order. That's truly the best way to enjoy it. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Before we start this week's episode, I wanted to announce that the official DVD for our film, Everest the Other Side, is now available for sale. Amazing, right? I'm very proud of the DVD, and it's beautiful. And it has a lot of bonus content. We're publishing the DVD ourselves, so we're opening the film up for pre-order so we can get an idea of just what the demand is, and so we can have enough copies manufactured. Uh, interested? Just go to EverestTheOtherSide.com to reserve your copy today. Thanks. This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 109, two steps up, 5,000 steps down. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest. I'm John Miller. Uh, joined, as always, luckily, with Ben Clark this week. How you doing, Ben? Yo, John. What's going on? Um, I'm doing well. And uh, Josh Butson, I hope you're doing well as, as well. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Well, good, because this week uh, we spend a lot of time in the tent with these guys, kind of getting into their heads a little bit and figuring out just what the whole process is when you are getting ready to uh, attempt an actual summit of, uh, of one of these peaks. And obviously the weather doesn't always work out, and sometimes it looks beautiful, sometimes it looks terrible, and either of those conditions can change in just a few hours. And whatever decision you had made, it might uh, you might be doing the opposite thing. So this this week we're going to actually really get into these guys uh, and find out exactly what the process is. So I would say let's uh, go up to somewhere around twenty thousand feet um, on Annapurna Four, and let's crawl in that tent with them. So here we go. All right, Butson, what's the story? story i ordered a pizza and i'm waiting for domino's to deliver <laughs> we're not coming damn it oh See what that? is the story four thousand dollar tip <laughs> <laughs> um i think the story is we're at that point of wake up tomorrow morning 12 o'clock midnight man see what's happening there's supposed to be some whims yeah wind coming in sorry about that and um that's definitely could have an issue with our summit attempt from here but i feel really good that we're not up higher right now i definitely feel like we'd possibly get trapped up there with those winds coming in with wind slabs building up avalanche potential being higher than it is right now at this moment <coughs> um so yeah game plan is Wake up at 12, see what's going on. If it's too windy, wait. See if it clears up by 3 o'clock, because that's what it did last night. Um, or I guess I should say this morning, early this morning. And, um, yeah, if it's still stormy and crappy out, there goes our attempt. It's not going to happen. We're probably going to wake up around 6 after that. Pack up camp and head on down the hill. Um, this looks like we've finally run out of our weather window. Supposed to be some weather coming in, starting with some wind and some various other things. So we'll see what happens. At this point, we go up or we go down. Or I guess we go up to go down. And we'll see what happens. Just sort of at that point right now, I'm content with either or. Whatever happens, happens. And um, we definitely, we haven't been dragging ass to this point. We've definitely pushed things to their max to get to this point on this mountain. We thought the snow conditions were going to get better. We waited a little bit longer and um, they didn't get better. They got worse. So that's what we've dealt with getting up to here. It's taken us a lot longer to get up to here than most any other expedition, I bet, on this hill. Uh, getting up here was really amazing. Josh led for quite a while a long block of very deep um, really deep snow, some ice here and there once you cleared off the snow, and some pretty uh, sketchy conditions for snow. So it was, it was pretty heady, a lot of 
a lot of thought, a little risk, and a lot of commitment involved. And then suddenly we find ourselves to the sort of the crux of the route, the real real technical difficulties. And uh, Josh was like, dude, it's you. And it's like, all right, awesome. He kept me fresh by leading so long yesterday. And uh, then I got up there, and we had some snow bridges to cross, and then we had this uh, this little step to climb. And we didn't shoot any video, but we got some really great uh, digital still photos of it. And I tell you what, I got into that thing, and we had talked to the Austrians, and it's a good point never to listen to anybody who uh, has been on the mountain right before you, um, <laughs> and hasn't made the top. And they were like, "Oh, maybe you will go and." You, you use the one, you know, the one ice tool. You know, it's, it's a very short step, it's one ice tool. So I'm sitting there thinking, oh, well, great, thanks a lot for the advice, guys. Hi, I'm a happy American. And uh, we get up here, and of course we both brought an ice tool, one, and meaning that we could combine them for two and, and still climb it. So we get up there, and I get on that thing, and I'm like, I can't climb this with one ice tool. Like, it is totally gnarly. It's disintegrating blob of rotten snow of... Uh, Behind it, kind of a detached, weird, uh, funky, organic-looking, almost look like a, an ice plant, uh, stuck to this somewhat vertical um, crevasse that was ready to peel. So it was, it was really, you know, like keep your head in check, committing. And I looked at Josh, and I had that one tool, and he's like, "Well, it's been a really good trip up to now, man. I'm perfectly content going home if you want to." And I was like, "Yeah, right. <laughs> Throw me your tool, dude." So, we got over it, and I, usually that kind of climbing I get over, and and I'm like, "Whoa," you know. I, I buried my head down on the top of the snow, and was just like, "Oh man, like wow, that was really uh, just pumping, and and really took a lot out of me." And, then all of a sudden I got up and I walked a few steps and then I was just like, "Woo!" <laughs> oh! <laughs> just so happy that uh, that it was over and that it meant we had pulled the crux is the hardest part of the route and uh, we weren't using the conventional tactics like everybody else. It's just two dudes out here doing our thing and climbing and uh, doing it well, you know, just being smart and making it happen the best we can. So then we cruised into here. We're about 20,000 feet now at our, our high camp. We're pitched about 1,000 feet lower than traditional camps because uh, there's a wind loading factor when lots of snow and wind tend to hit this mountain coming out of the southwest and, and jungle inversion on the other side. Um, it can get really dangerous up there, and you can get trapped. If we were to pitch a camp up there and winds hit, we would probably have to stay there a couple of days if there was some snow involved. So I woke up this morning, looked at Josh, and I was like, you know, I am not feeling good about going up to that camp, and I know that we have to repel a whole lot and do a lot of technical work to get out of this camp because of all the stuff we did yesterday. So today we're chilling here, drinking some water, hanging out, eating a little bit, and freshening up. And our goal is to get up at midnight tonight and try for the summit, which is still pretty feasible. We can definitely do it, but our... Uh, our weather window is wearing down. We've probably only got one more good day of decent weather. If the winds begin to pick up tonight, uh, it's pretty much over. And we'll drop out of this camp and go on back down to base camp tomorrow. But you really don't ever know what's going to come up. We always get up here and try. And being here this late in the season, um, typically snow conditions would get better. They didn't. So here we are, biding our time, giving ourselves a chance and lightening our loads to see if we can get one more day out of the Annapurna Himal on Annapurna 4 to give us what we need to go for the summit. But if we don't go for the summit, I really don't care. I'm over it. We've climbed hard, we've came here, we've pushed it really far for two people, and I just feel like there's not much else we can do other than at some point you have to start working completely with the mountain and stop working against it, and that seems to be what we've been doing all along and what we want to continue to do because the moment you try and snap back at this bad boy I guarantee you its bite is going to be a lot bigger than yours and we just want to go home safe and uh, survive this thing no no messing around no you know there's plenty of other trips to do and I mean this has been a good experience so far I really can't complain I'm drink some more water eat some more food Hopefully feel better for tomorrow. I get to rest.
And you guys hadn't had any contact with Tim for like a week, right? Right. Yeah, we he had been down. He actually, there's a whole another story that we find out when we get down to base camp that I'm sure we'll cover in a future episode. But yeah, there was certainly some activity going on below us and above us right where we are as well. So we're sitting here still the same day where uh, we're resting, hoping to go for the summit. And kind of our plan was that we need for it not to snow and not to be windy. And it's snowing and it's windy. <laughs> so we're just hanging out. We're going to give it time. We might have lost our weather window. We don't know. We'll see. But if this keeps up, um, chances are we're probably waking up and uh, skiing down. Nice sponsorship shot again. <laughs> That's right. Mountain Hardware. Yes. Footing, footing bills for dreams for since the 1990s. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We got it. How's my hair look? Like I need a shave too. Like you've been in the mountains for way too damn long. Too long. Well, folks. And folks. <laughs> and more folks. So, this was the day we were going to move to Camp Three. It's now super windy, very cold, and blowing lots of snow. We elected this morning not to move to Camp Three because we're smart guys, right? Um, I believe so. It seems like it. We kind of woke up with an intuitive feeling that it probably wasn't a great idea to move to Camp 3. Thinking, well, we could get trapped up there pretty easily if it started to pretty much rain or snow like it's doing right now. And uh, or have wind and snow like it's doing right now. And so here we are hanging out. And I'd love to say, wow, that was such a great decision. We're such smart people. But actually what it means is the climb is over. Jigs up. We got to move down. That slope is too loaded. Um, there's no way we're going to want to get up on the higher portions of the mountain because avalanche danger is going to be too high. And it's going to be sketchy as hell. It's going to be total pins and needles just trying to get off the mountain as is. So we're just going to kind of ride it out like we would, keep a good attitude, and repel as much as we can, ski as much as we can, and eat some cheese pizza when we get down there because... We've given it the best we can. I feel about as broken as I did after I climbed Everest. Our nose is peeling, neck is peeling, freaking feet hurt. You name it, we have really thrown ourselves at this mountain and kept in line with our style. And so now this is it. This is what we do. We call it. And here we are. So what are we going to do? I think we're going to go down. Down to base camp. Down to base camp, okay. Yeah, I was thinking we'd eat something. You hungry? Um, maybe. Yeah. Maybe just yeah. a little. Yeah. Something. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking. I was thinking. Uh, we wouldn't go up. Okay. No, but we had already decided. I said that tomorrow morning we're gonna pack up camp and then we're gonna take two steps up and a lot of steps down. Yeah. Two. Two up and then about five thousand feet down. Sound good? Mm, I don't want to step that much. I'm. Gonna, I'm gonna ski. Oh, okay. I was planning on skiing some too. Yeah. Uh, while you're skiing though. Do you mind if uh, if I pull up my toboggan and just sled down? I'm going to, the shovels, I think we're going to work really well for that. Okay, cool. The sections that we're not going to ski, we're, we're going to shovel down. Shovel down, yeah. Sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, one of my favorite things to do is to launch off the lip of a crevasse and hit the roof on yeah. a shovel. Yeah, So yeah, that you yeah. have that metal impact, you uh -huh. know, and if it doesn't break, you're like, oh, awesome. But if it does, you're like, Whatever, what's you know what's wrong with the two hundred foot cold icy death? You, you don't mind if I go first, okay? I'll, I'll test it out. And see if it's gonna Whatever, happen. I'm not letting you have all the first descents <laughs> here. I think we've, we you know it's we're teeth. gonna have the, we're gonna have the first shovel descent of those people. We're losing water. our minds yeah. at this point. Yeah. <laughs> just think so. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yep. That's what happens when you spend too much time with somebody in a tent. It sounds like playing. Peace. See Who needs TV? Just watch our podcasts. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful next morning. Minus all the snow that's in the ground, of which isn't a lot around us because most of it got blown around by the wind on the upper slopes. So, so even though the weather looks beautiful right here, it doesn't matter. First of all, you guys had already committed to going down at this point, physically and emotionally. Um, but it would have been too dangerous to go up anyway. 
correct. We, we could have went up, but we would have went down real fast, probably in a big avalanche. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well probably would have ended up in one of those crevasses, buried with a lot of snow on top of us. <laughs> and that would be bad. That would be very bad. Yes, sir. Ready to go? Almost ready to go. Get that tent in here, and we'll be ready to head down the hill. It's amazing. Hands are warmer outside the gloves than in them. Huh. Time to skedaddle. The uh, slope up here looks like a powder day in Telluride, which is not a good sign. We're going to try and get out of here as fast <clears> as we can. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we both feel really strong. Josh is looking good. I'm feeling great. But, um, yep, too dangerous. So, what are you going to do? You're going to get on down. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> Yep, sure it was a nice place up there though, as long as I wasn't there. <laughs> I can definitely appreciate the beauty of the area, but uh, yeah, it certainly was, you guys had had enough. And uh, it certainly wasn't going to get, uh, you, you weren't going to be able to get up there and do what you wanted to do up there anyway, so. That's true. It's an addiction. You know, you can always go back and get your other fix. Exactly. Which, which we're able to do this past spring. Well, but but I think at this point you needed a fix of cheese pizza uh, more than you needed a summit fix. So I could have used a big hamburger. Ben's <laughs> definitely a pizza man. I like pizza to a certain extent. It's the fries that I look forward to. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, it's totally. That, it's that extra oil. <sighs> yep. Fries are good. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. I guess you could say that going down is the easy part. But definitely tune in next week because you'll find it's anything but easy getting down off this mountain. Or fun. Or fun. <laughs> or it's a slog. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> just, it is. It is the uh, definition of slog. So, hey, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate uh, getting to peer into the tent and getting to get get come to grips with your mindsets as you're uh, recognizing what's really going on here. So, thanks a lot for filming all of that. Thanks for editing it all and putting it together for us to all see. <laughs> yeah, thanks, John. All right, guys, and we will see you next week, and I will see all of you in the audience next week. Bye. The rest of Everest is downloaded all over the world every day, and watching the show has become a part of many people's weekly routine. The show will always be free to download, but it's by no means free to produce. Please help me cover my costs by making a small monthly or one-time donation from the right sidebar on my website, and in return I'll give you some cool bonus materials. A donation of any amount will grant you access to some interesting video content, including high-definition versions of several podcast episodes, a one-time donation of $25 or more, or any of the monthly donation options will additionally grant you access to a downloadable version of the film Everest The Other Side, which episodes 1 to 61 are based on. I really cannot express how vital these donations are, and if you've made a donation, thank you so much. As always, our announcer is Marlon May, and our music is provided by Wendy Wu. Check her out at wendywu.com. Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching The Rest of Everest. For more information on the expedition, please visit therestofeverest.com. <laughs>